Are you tired of being nice? Does your back ache from carrying the hopes and dreams of precarious worlds? Are you done seeking redemption? Do you want to scurry? Do you want to skulk? Do you want to eat trash and cause problems? If so, I've got some good news for you. You don't have to be the chosen one. You can just go goblin. Goblin is a catch-all term for fey folk with ill intent. In European folklore, they're usually a couple hands tall, pointy little teeth covered in hair. Just about every culture has some sort of awful little guys that cause problems for fun. For centuries, goblins served as a convenient folkloric scapegoat for any of the rotten shit life could throw at us. A missing spoon, a strange smell in the house, baby theft. Then in the 1930s, J.R.R. Tolkien repurposed goblins, transforming them from mischievous household troublemakers into twisted little servants of an evil god. Tolkien used goblin and orc fairly interchangeably, but in the half century of derivative fantasy fiction that followed, most creators settled into an orc to goblin spectrum, with orcs being bigger and more imposing, and goblins being hostile but physically unimpressive little jerks. Then in 2019, Twitter user Leon invented goblin posting. A comedic counterpoint to radical softness, goblin posting gave voice to a growing sentiment. These awful little creatures, weak, desperate, and ugly, they were a lot like us. Self-identifying as a nasty little goblin is fun. Going goblin mode fulfills the same psychological purpose of seeing a picture of a messed up bug or a broken toilet and saying, that's me. In short, there seems to be in the cultural unconscious a desire to be one's worst self and make the lives of others bad in funny ways. If you're looking to go goblin mode in video games, there are some pretty good options. So I reviewed them using my custom goblin appraisal criteria. How do they carry themselves? Do they care about posture, hygiene? These are things that we have to worry about as humans, but not when we're going goblin mode. Goblins of myth are willful, self-serving creatures. They do the things they do because they enjoy them or out of raw compulsion. If they've got a plan for world domination, they're thinking too hard. This one is exactly what it sounds like. When you're playing this game, does it encourage you to giggle loathsomely to yourself? It should. Of Orcs and Men is a 2012 action RPG that had a couple of goblin-centric stealth action follow-ups. The goblin designs pull from the standard post-Tolkienian portrayals. Hunched posture, sneaky creeping, jagged little daggers. So it scores decent marks in personal nastiness. But in hee hee hoo hoo factor, it's mid. It's a stealth game, so it's got a little bit of that scamp sauce, but there's very little whimsy or joy to the way you play. It's just tactical espionage and knives to necks. The series' biggest downfall is that these goblins have great reasons to be doing what they're doing. Framing the goblins as actually the good guys might be a more subversive fantasy story, but it also robs the gobs of the very thing that makes them charming. Right out of the gate, Middle-Earth Shadow of War is serving top quality gobos. From the semi-procedurally generated nemeses to the fully scripted orc companions, every nasty little guy you meet oozes mischief, malice, and jubilance. There's orcs who speak in verse, orcs who love to cook, orcs who are voiced by Kumail Nanjiani for some reason. Sure, you could kill me now, go the predictable route, but you're an original, a wild man. The problem is that you're not one of them. You're a boring fucking ranger with an even more boring ghost living in his brain, and while you run with the gobbies, all of the gobby behavior is justified, as you're a noble ranger trying to keep a greater evil at bay. It's stupid. Fuck this. WoW has playable goblins, and the lads are jagged toothed and nasty looking, but the ladies are just green. This shit sucks. If nastiness isn't evenly distributed amongst the genders, then there's no point. This is where we have to address the sad truth about goblin gaming. Many of the best goblin games don't actually have folkloric goblins in them. But the untitled Goose Games Goose plays the role well. The goose isn't nasty and gnarled, but it is a small menace. Geese occupy this very goblin-y space where they're big and belligerent enough to be a problem for a human person, but they're small and cute enough that if you punt one like a soccer ball, you're the asshole. Nasty. This goose also scores high for bad intentions. 
The Untitled Goose is truly in it for the love of chaos. There's no saccharine rug pull where you learn that they are being a menace to, I don't know, save their babies or something. They just really want to cause misfortune and hoard baubles. And the hee hee hoo hoo factor is simply off the charts. Just look at this. Bear with me for a second on this one. In Star Wars Force Unleashed, you play as Darth Vader's secret son, and he is the strongest Jedi alive, but for some reason, he only wants to wear dirty rags and stand like the caveman Spongebob meme. He's played by the very handsome Sam Witwer, but he's able to reclaim some nastiness points with his rotten attitude. Unfortunately, he scores pretty low on intent. As Vader's secret apprentice, he's an agent of the Empire. When he inevitably goes rogue, he's fighting for justice. Believing in a cause? Not goblin-y. But here's what brought Starkiller to the dance. His hee-hee-hoo-hoo -hoo factor is astronomically bananas. He's got a lot of deadly techniques for wiping enemies off the face of the earth, but he's also got force grip. Perhaps the most hilariously sadistic ability in any game ever. You can pick up your enemies and move them around with unnecessary granularity, full three axis manipulation, no time limit. The whole thing is sold by the Euphoria physics engine. These guys are flailing and yelling the whole time. They'll reach for stuff in the environment and even grab onto their buddies. So you've just got this barrel of monkeys chain of screaming idiots. If you're goblinly inclined, this is the good shit. <laughs> This game could have had perfect marks if Starkiller was a bit less repressed, more useless, and 11 inches tall. Ghost Trick is a Nintendo 3DS poltergeist game with inventive gameplay, amazing character design, and stunning animation. But it's not a goblin game. Yeah, but a goose isn't a goblin either, so that kind of like negates like why why would a ghost not be a goblin? Well, because like like you, you can call like a goose a goblin or you can call a guy a goblin because those are just things, right? And a ghost is already a different thing from a guy or a goose, right? You could look at you could look at your cat, right? If your yeah. cat's being a little shit and you're like, "Oh, you're being a real fucking goblin right now." But you wouldn't like look at a ghost flying around your apartment and say, "You're being a real goblin." Cuz you're being a ghost. And if your cat goes right. ghost mode, you got a different problem. That's right. But is Agent 47 a goblin? The biggest mark against Agent 47's goblin status is his absolutely perfect posture. Physically, he is not goblin-y. He's clean, efficient, and strong. He's also not especially willful or rude. While he operates beyond the laws of common man, he's usually just doing what someone else told him to do. But Agent 47 comes to life when the player is in control. Together you hoard coins and cans of soda and knives and wrenches. You gaslight goons by turning the lights on and off over and over again. You giggle and scurry from room to room, swinging constantly between untraceable mastermind and fragile little pest. And you do this. The clockwork worlds of Hitman really sell the goblin fantasy. The people around you seem genuinely annoyed, vexed, and sometimes frightened by your antics. In order to be a proper goblin, you need proper victims, a league of straight men to let you know just how bad you're fucking up their day. Hitman gives that to you. If only it gave you this. We return to the realms of traditional goblinhood with a game that may provide the most holistic goblin roleplay ever. Folkloric goblins are known for causing problems around the house. In Total Warhammer, that house is the whole world. On the nastiness scale, these are straight tens, even though we're using five in our rating system. The Greenskin faction most closely resembles the Tolkienian ideal, a loose confederation of goblins and orcs with terrible posture, gnarled teeth, rusty blades, and body cockney accents. They're good, and their intent is bad, but in a fun way. Warhammer is an awful world to live in, full of hateful, self-righteous, pompous factions vying for control. The orcs and goblins are the only ones having fun because they simply love to fight. They're a roving band of fantasy football hooligans, whipping themselves into a foam of not rage but destructive euphoria. There are few, if any, ulterior motives, just the overriding need to be the biggest, nastiest boy there is. 
And if we're willing to once again broaden our definition of goblinism, they're not the only stars. The Skaven are a faction of perpetually terrified rat people. They don't show up to battle with any particular bravado, but they do bring whimsical, unethical war machines. They're driven by a relentless desire to survive and eat, and they've decided that the path to salvation lies in obsessively overclocking their rigs. And finally, there's Nurgle's little guys. They are perhaps the nastiest of all, just look at them. Their intent is to spread illness and decay, not out of any particular malice, but simply because that's what they do. That's pretty goblin-y. The hee hee hoo hoo rating here is also excellent, not just because these factions have unscrupulous playstyles and mechanics, but because they set you up to roleplay. The problem I have in most games that give me a choice of how to act is that I don't like being mean or sadistic, especially when it means my virtual companions will be disappointed in me. But Total Warhammer doesn't just give you permission to be bad, it makes being bad a victory condition. And if you pick one of the gobby factions, the stupid snobby humans already have an overwhelmingly poor opinion of you. That's what I need. I need to be told that the best way to regenerate my troops is to eat my captives. I need to be told that my god will only love me if I give an entire continent diarrhea. I need to be forced to roleplay doing things I wouldn't normally do. There are no bridges to be burned, no moral authorities, just tacit permission to be greedy, mean, and unclean. While the goblins of yore were a magical embodiment of life's inconveniences and pain, going goblin mode is an opportunity to get off the receiving end of that shit. It's a chance to give your most pathetic, fearful, destructive tendencies a gnarled little avatar and set them loose in a world where nobody actually gets hurt. That's me.